We're talking about the studs, the Texans, and we're talking about the duds, Gabe Davis. I hate you. On today's uh, episode, we're going to walk you through this weekend's football. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, and I'm nasty, the nasty boys are here today, everybody. Welcome in. I'm your host today. There's a bear here, too. There's a nasty bear. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Your host for the day. Joined by my best friend, Jason Moore. What's up, best friend? Hello, best friend. Jay Grizz, a.k.a. Cardboard Bear Extraordinaire, a.k.a. Jay Riz. He is loving uh, He's loving himself uh, What's what he's seeing from the bears. I mean, the process. But he, he did inform us. We may have to have an official nickname change. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, fr- uh, of who? Of the quarterback. Of Bilbo Bajant. Okay. Because we didn't know how to say his name at first. Right, and so we thought we, it was Bat. Yeah, so it was Bilbo Bajant, but then it turns out it's Bajant. Right, and it doesn't flow. And it doesn't sound that great. <gasps> so he has been polling for Secret Bajant Man. Secret <laughs> Bajant Man. As all names on this show need to have a fun uh, musical soundbite because that's how we work here. But anyways, welcome into the show. Monday, November 6th. Crazy, crazy week of football. Um, a lot of a lot of very disappointing things mm-hmm. and yet some very incredible things like Josh freaking Dobbs. Oh, man. Destroying the super villain. Yes. That is Snidely Whiplash freaking Arthur Smith. Half of no practice. It took it took Josh Dobbs literally nothing. Nothing. He walked in off of the he he flew in, went right to the stadium, mm-hmm. got the call, and defeated well, it, Arthur Smith. Keep in mind, he didn't even get the five days of, of practice with the first team. He wasn't supposed to start. The starter goes out injured, and the backup who doesn't know this system comes in and beats Arthur Smith down. For all fantasy football managers, oh. thank you, Josh Dubs. <laughs> oh, you're giving him the dub? Yeah, I mean, he got the dub. Yes. Uh, we are all forever indebted to Joshua Dobbs for the service that he provided in week nine. Oh. What? I was I was just thinking. I was like, oh, man, who am I going to root for this week against the Atlanta Falcons? Who am I going to root for? It's our Cardinals. Yes. And Kyler. Let's go. Now, are you conf- For America? <laughs> are are you conflicted? No, I'm not conflicted at all. I want a pure and utter beatdown of Arthur You'll, Smith. You want to sacrifice the number one pick to Set beat it on Arthur fire. Smith? Set it on fire. We're not going to get the number one pick with Kyler. Probably not. But anyways, follow us on the social medias, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. The social team is always hard at work putting up incredible content out there. And over on Twitter slash X at the FF Ballers, you can follow Jason at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman, and Andy is at Andy Holloway. Jason, mm-hmm. yes. uh, <laughs> are you feeling sophisticated? Mm, so so sophisticated. We will start with CJ Wowed. Oh, CJ Proud. <laughs> Tank Delicious. Tank. Dell yeah, man. Or what about Taysom Hill? Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, run, Mondre Stevenson. Go forever. Oh, we have a late breaking edition. Cleveland WST and Dalton Kincaid. But it wasn't all great. Travis P. U. Smelsy <laughs> Pooper Cup. Oh no. Devin Dingleberry is back. <laughs> uh, Dookie Metcalf. Uh, Tony Poulard. And my personal favorite, Brett Rippin Farts. <laughs> and of course, Arthur Smithereens, as he was uh, blown into a thousand smithereens. Smithereens, that's a good word. 
I don't think I've I've said the phrase blown into a thousand smithereens in a very long time, and I'm disappointed in myself. What does smithereens actually mean? They're just it's a real small something. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I know I don't know oh. what it actually means. But when I use it small, in small broken pieces. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Smithereens. How did they where did that word come from? I'm on it. Like did, did from it, the Irish word smitterini, which means little bits. Okay. 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 I was gonna go into a soliloquy about a man named Smithers who was who met, got an unf- blown met, up. met an unfortunate ending. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty dark. Hey man, I don't know what it is. Uh but that was that was the puns. Thank you so much for everyone who shared them this week. Uh let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. If you missed it, the Chargers placed Darren Waller on the IR with the hamstring injury. That stinks big time. There's more bad news for the Giants coming up. Uh, the Chargers also placed Joshua Palmer on the IR with his knee injury before uh, we got a, got a fun game tonight. Giants quarterback Daniel Jones likely out for the year with a torn M, uh, torn ACL. Sorry, uh, they got to confirm with the MRI. Tyrod Taylor's out on IR, which leaves Tommy, not Danny DeVito, and Matt Barkley is on the practice squad. If you saw the the Daniel Jones sequence of events, it was a big time bummer. Of he did, he was trying to evade uh, pressure as. Daniel Jones has had to do very, very many times this year and then just went down non-contact. He thought he could get up and play through it. Very next play, takes his drop back, plants, and just crumples, oh. goes down like a sack of potatoes, and you knew that something was really wrong with Daniel at that point. Yeah, and Tommy Danny DeVito is, man, he's not good enough there's a couple backups playing this week that are just not good enough to be in the NFL well he, I mean he's a in his defense he is a third stringer who is not ready yet to to start yeah I mean, I mean it's it's fair he shouldn't be starting but right now it looks like he might have to continue starting with the injury to you know Tyrod Taylor's on IR uh with his rib injury uh so right as of now it looks like it's Danny DeVito, who I'll tell you what, man, Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones had been terrible. But if you ever want to look at Daniel Jones like Ar- Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito comes in here. Yeah. You, got a, you got a twin situation where it's like, man, give oh, no. me Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is the Arnold one? Yes, for sure. Kyle is suggesting Carson Wentz or Matt Ryan, Jay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Carson Wentz. Well, here's, here's the, the bet. Thing. Here's the thing. The, the Giants – are the, on the, the their way. The season is done. The season is over. Yes. They've already lost so many games. They don't need to bring someone in to try to win. They just they need to go after that number 1 pick and have, you know, they're they're in the running now for Caleb Williams. Sure. Yeah, it's probably in their best interest to trust the process for next year. Eagles tight end Dallas Goddard who fractured his forearm against the Cowboys. He expect he is expected to have surgery miss about 4 weeks. Uh so probably we're going to see IR, but it is not season ending. Yeah, I I would guess that he will go on IR. Um, this is unfortunate news, obviously for Dallas Goddard, for the managers, for the Eagles. However, we did see when Dallas Goddard missed games last oh, year. Yeah. Yep, that is where Devontae Smith, yes, caught fire, huge bump, huge bump up for Devontae Smith. Vikings running back Cam Akers tore his Achilles oh, on Sunday. No, this is not. Uh, deja vu. This is not a repeat. This is a new injury to his other leg. So he has now torn both Achilles. That, Un- unfortunate. I mean, that's that's, that's the end. That is his career. That is the end. Uh, if, the reason that Joshua Dobbs became a national hero, which we, I am starting a GoFundMe for a parade. Oh, for just a, a just a, a parade, and it's gonna go from Minneapolis, or it's gonna go. From Minneapolis down to Atlanta. <laughs> nice. Just, it, it's just going to finish there. You're, it's going to finish at Arthur Smith's front door. Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Perfect. And look, I, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think that the people of of, of uh, Atlanta will also be celebrating that 
once Arthur is gone. I know for sure that, uh, you know, we, we know some uh, Falcons fans. They absolutely hate Arthur Smith because all people hate Arthur Smith. <laughs> he, is, he is the super villain. Like, it's been a, a like a, what, the self, uh, Fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy of him getting himself into this situation where people on the outside are getting frustrated with him, and then he just doubles down, mm -hmm. and then we double down, and we're in the quadruple down portion of the back and forth. Where it's only going to get worse. So, oh, yeah. Oh, certainly. So I didn't. I, I haven't watched any of his press conference yet from the loss. But oh, I, I have not either. I really want to do that. There's got to be some gems of him being an yeah, ornery old know-it-all man we're, we're talking pulling, down to people. We're pulling the projector screen down, Jay. We're having a whole group get, viewing. Get the popcorn. Inside of the Fantasy Footballers headquarters. The reason why Josh Dobbs is playing is because Jaron Hall left with a concussion, as did K.J. Osborne. Both were, I mean, were brutal hits. K.J. Osborne was out cold for a, a bit, but seemed to be okay-ish I mean for him mean, he has a head injury but like was you know kind of smiling waving as he was getting carted off Josh Downs of the Colts he aggravated his knee injury he had to exit early so he will be questionable going into next week Packers wide receiver Christian Watson was evaluated for chest and back injuries on Sunday against the Rams he was also evaluated for a concussion towards the end of the game this guy I mean, he cannot stay healthy. No, that's that's been his biggest issue is staying healthy. Although, I don't know at this point if that's the biggest issue or if Jordan Love being his quarterback is the biggest it, issue. It was weird. I mean, it was full Jekyll Hyde because Jordan Love was atrocious in the first half and then was very good in the second half. He was, he was definitely uh, much better. But uh, on the course of the season, I feel like the sample is yeah, yeah, yeah. large enough now. to Like, he's had a couple amazing plays. Uh, on the, uh, th This season, Jordan Love has um, done some really good stuff. But he is so incredibly inconsistent with that that, like, there's just too much. You know, when 75% of what you're doing is bad and 25% is great, like, it, it, you can't be good enough in the 25% to make up for the majority of the time sucking. But it's, it was he was so bad in the first half and yet ended 20 of 26. Yeah. So that's 77% completion percentage. 228 yards, 8.8 .8 yards per attempt. One yeah. touchdown, I mean, and then they handled the Rams. Uh that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Studs of the Week, presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Real, real quick, I want to go back to what you said. They handled the Rams. I just want all credit to be given to B Brett Rippin farts because <laughs> Brett Rippin was one of the handful of guys this week that were so beyond not NFL quarterbacks that it was like, you don't need to watch this game. You can't do anything. Brett Rippon was atrocious. Clayton Toon was worse. I mean, it, it's it was a problem this weekend, which is why, you know, we're we're in the studs now. The studs across all positions are just the Texans, because it wasn't a huge <laughs> week for most people. What a game! Uh, yeah, so we start at the top. C.J. Stroud, four hundred and seventy passing yards. That is the rookie record. Five touchdowns. He is currently on pace for 4,800 yards and 30 passing touchdowns. Goodness gracious, where are you with C.J. Stroud? I'm in love. <laughs> I mean, uh, we, we said this super early on in the season. Um, we talked about like, okay, it's we're calling it now. It's official. He's really, really the real deal. He's good. He's going to be great. Um, for fantasy purposes, I'm still much cooler on him than a superstar fantasy asset because I think he's going to be a pocket passer. And obviously, y you can stay in the pocket and put up 40 fantasy points like he did. Uh, I, I believe this is the highest fantasy game for a rookie. I mean, Maybe of all time. has to be. I think it's of all time. I know it's more than anything Cam did, and Newton had some some crazy great games his rookie season. Um, so uh, Maybe because of rushing. 
You yeah, might have outscored but him. goodness. Um, usually, though, you're not going to throw for 470 yards and five right. uh, passing touchdowns when you're in the pocket. You're, you're gonna you're gonna have a really really solid good career uh, from C.J. Stroud, but he's just not. He doesn't add enough on the ground to um, excite me for like him being a a stud future fantasy option. Yeah, understandable. Quarterback. If you didn't see the Texans game, Ooh. it was. I mean, it was unbelievable. Just a back and forth. Both teams' offenses were were absolutely doing work. You had, uh, you had an emergency kicker from the Texans, Dare Agumbawale. Shout out on yes. the, on the puns. Uh, there was uh, oh. Dare a boom boom, <laughs> Wale. Oh, nice. Like I mean, we've heard that name. His name has come up in the past as like a. A, a running back who got a call up because of injuries in yeah, front of him. pass catching running yeah. back. And the, the kicker was hurt, and he had to go in, and he had to kick. And he kicked a 29-yard field goal. That puts them super important. Yeah, like, I, that put them up. It put them up. And and it was like, oh, well, this game is done. But then the Buccaneers went all the way down the field, and they scored, and there was 40 seconds left. Yeah, so this game is done. The Bucs won. And, and the Texans need a touchdown. No and, timeouts. And then Tank Dell and C.J. Stroud, it was an absolute incredible comeback. I really recommend, if you have not seen the highlights from it, go watch. It's that, a good time. That might have been the game of the year. Between two teams with losing records, it was still absolutely unbelievable. And and he he is definitely the real deal. So, Jay, we do have an update. In four-point passing touchdowns, that was the highest fantasy output by a, a rookie quarterback. Barely beating out Josh Allen. Okay. Well, there, and that means in six point, it certainly is because he had, you know, right. five passing touchdowns. So this is the best fantasy performance in a single game for a rookie of all time. That's amazing. Dak Prescott, 374, three passing touchdowns. Some, uh, some unfortunate errors at the end of the game. So for, I mean, if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, but they played great, the Eagles end up taking the victory. But Dak has now finished as the QB1. The QB three, he is currently the QB two, and I will be so bold to say the farthest he will fall after tonight would be quarterback three. You don't think Zach Wilson? I don't can push him out. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry, Zach. Uh, but so he's been absolutely incredible. It was Andy's start of the week. My second half sleeper. He gets to play the Giants, the Panthers, the Manders, mm. Seattle. Philadelphia. Mm. That is the next. That is the stretch run here. Delicious for Dak Prescott, who they are heating up. He and Ceedee Lamb are doing incredible things. Jalen Hurts. He's just. just he, he is every week. <laughs> uh, you know, so ridiculous. I don't understand how he's so good for fantasy. Um, I'm thoroughly. This is going to sound so weird. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. You know, he was my my guy last right, year. Right, right. I've got him in all my important leagues. Uh, he's like the centerpiece for me, and I I love the man, like the human. He's yeah. such a, a awesome dude, and I love him as a football player. I say all that to set up to say like I've been watching this year and been so thoroughly unimpressed. <laughs> like I'm watching, I'm like, it just doesn't seem like he's doing anything special. You watch Josh Allen, it's like whoa. You watch Mahomes, you're like how did he do? He's just. He's just like, ah, oh, let me toss it he's, up here. He's to... just lunchboxing, man. <laughs> yes, he's just like, but every single week here, going back from week two on, here's his fantasy finishes at quarterback: four, nine, six, three, two, five, five, three. He's basically a not just a quarterback one, but a top half quarterback one every single week, yep. no matter what. And this was against Dallas defense, which yep. is great and an injury scare. Oh man. An injury, I was, I was <laughs> you, ready to you just get, you, you like you barely even knew what was happening, and you're in our slack, just giving up on fantasy on football, this, yeah. giving up on life. I can't, I can't lose my man. <laughs> but uh, then he was fine. Well, t to be fair, it was right before the half, so we just didn't know. It was right. like, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh Dobbs, <laughs> one fifty-eight and two, no twenty one. of thirty. He did have sixty-six rushing yards and a rushing touchdown as well, which. That's exactly what you – I mean, he was playing backyard ball. Yeah, I he mean, didn't know. He doesn't know the place. He's asking the guys, and he doesn't even know anyone's name. He The the more 
like more and more just kept coming out about how unprepared Joshua Dobbs was to play in a football game, a professional football game. And he went out there and he beat the tar out of Arthur Smith. It was great. Awesome. Um Next week he gets the Saints. I don't think it's going to go as well. No, and for Dobbs, and, and I, you know, nobody was playing Dobbs uh, be, because he, yeah, wasn't, a he starter. wasn't a starter. Um, and I don't, I don't anticipate that you should be playing Dobbs. No, but the the good news is, I think we saw enough life. Like T.J. Hawkinson is going to be fine. I mean, he was he was still getting the regular T.J. Hawkinson treatment, and I think that Addison will be okay. It's definitely a tear down. It's not the Kirk Cousins Addison you had, but we had the questions of, are they? Is Addison eliminated? Like, the, that was the fear for Puka and mm -hmm. Cooper Cup, and last and they, or yesterday they, they, were they were eliminated. eliminated. They were they were gone for fantasy football because Brett Rip and Farts was just not able to get them the ball. There's targets. There's targets going around. Oh yeah, they were just not. Yeah, Puka and Cooper good. Cup super involved in, in in the in a fake way. Yes, so that's going to be very sketchy moving forward. But the point being. I think Addison over the course will be okay. We do have the the Justin Jefferson variable of is is he coming back? When's he coming back? I don't think anyone has real information on that just yet. Josh Allen continues to be a stallion and Joe Burrow 348 and 2 against Buffalo. Like it was just it's great continuation of Joe Burrow is back. Yeah. And we had a little bit of uh his own scare in this one. I mean his his uh he had a hurt fingy mm -hmm. which was very bloody. And then he had to – it was heat or ice. They were doing something to the calf. The calf that he'd hurt at training camp, but it was, oh, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Please, but he was fine. Please don't revert to early season injured Joe Burrow because that was not fun. I no. really enjoy the Bengals being great. This is four wins in a row now, and this is two big wins in a row. The San Francisco 49ers, the Buffalo Bills. That's that's saying, okay, you, you, you all counted us out. I yep. counted them out, and he's – Yep. The window is open. They are back. Before we get into the running backs, just going to take a quick break. Be right back. We are back with the running back studs. Jay, you almost played him. You declared you almost played him. I, I like him. I liked him as a as a play this week. Rashad White, keep targeting the Houston Texans with running backs. It worked out. Twenty for seventy three. I mean. <laughs> it's eh. not it's not very efficient. <laughs> but 20 carries and two rushing touchdowns and four receptions. He is the running back 15 on the year. Gets to take on the Tennessee Titans and San Francisco next. We'll, we'll, see. we'll see. Do you trade high? There's just – there. Uh, I don't know, man. I think it, I – No one – no – there there are so few running backs that actually get the volume. That yeah. can get 20 carries and four targets. Yeah, 100%. I mean, he's a good he's a good asset for fantasy. It's just a matter of um are you can you capitalize and get more from him off of a number 1 overall performance, three good weeks in a row, people being needy for him, you know, that's that's just I personally I would see if I could try to trade up to someone that I think is just better, you know? Fair. Josh Jacobs. He looked pretty good. Uh, after the house clearing that the that ownership went with, 26 for 98, two rushing touchdowns, but zero targets. We don't like to see that. Is that did he really have no targets? He had no targets. Um, the thing is, is this is two games with Aiden O'Connell, and in the previous one, he had a ton of targets. So this doesn't make me afraid of like, oh no, the new quarterback is going to not target Josh Jacobs. This was also, you got to keep in mind, a, a one-sided, just complete beatdown of the hapless Danny DeVito-led Giants. So they didn't need to uh, throw, they, sure. they didn't need to do much. They just kept running the ball. That's why he had 26 carries. Um, he, he looked good, and man, is that Raiders locker room. <laughs> you talk about the... Uh the video, the the Stogies. Oh my goodness! The Stogies, the Stogies were sparked up. These guys were celebrating like they just made it into the playoffs. Yeah, or won this the was Super their Bowl. Super Bowl. Like it was, it, they're so happy. Game they're game so one happy. without the former crew got the victory. 
Ramondre Stevenson, the plan continues to work. Yeah. He's the running back nine over the last month. That's where, you know, we said uh trade for him at that point. And yep. he's been he's been pretty good. Obviously he was Ramondre uh Steven sucks last week, <laughs> but uh he was very, very good this week. Got a sixty four yard run. It's fastest I've seen him look. Six targets. That's fantastic. Gus Edwards. Oh what? My. Yeah. <laughs> what if, indeed. If if you faced Gus Edwards this week, I am so sorry because it was ridiculous. He had five carries. He he, he had no targets. He had five carries. He had five opportunities in this game. He barely played. He barely <laughs> played in this game. Gus Edwards didn't hit 20% of snaps. He was in a few times, touched the ball five times, and is the running back six on the week because multiple touchdowns will do that. He also had a 42-yard run. Yep. It was it, it, it's funny because um his teammate Keaton Mitchell, rookie sensation maybe, I don't uh, know. Yeah, we'll see. Had 138 rushing yards, was excellent. Neither one of them played. This was the Justice Hill show. He was in for the vast majority of snaps. Yeah, we got Justin uh Justice Hill. This is a, a tweet from JJ Zacharyson. and Justice Hill 48 snaps, Gus Edwards 14, Keaton Mitchell 13. Right, but Justice Hill, worthless for fantasy. The other two superstars. Oh, unbelievable. Alexander Madison uh, wasn't hey. – I mean, he came through for fantasy, two for 49 and a touchdown through the air. He still does not have a rushing touchdown. The schedule is the same as Dobbs, but we get Saints, and then we, but then we get Denver and Chicago, and Cam Akers is no longer a inactive Minnesota Viking. It will go back to Madison and Ty Chandler. AKA it's it will probably go back to Alexander Madison being a workhorse. It's not the offense that you want a workhorse on. I mean, kind of like Rashad White. Uh huh. But again, not many running backs get a bunch of touches and he's going to get a lot. Yeah. I mean he he's gonna go back to what we saw where he you know, there's seventy three percent, seventy six percent, eighty percent of snaps, seventy nine percent of snaps. He's going to be um uh, you know, an opportunity volume play on a weekly basis. If there's a good matchup, you play him. If there's a bad matchup, you still might have to play him. Yeah. Aaron Jones, are we back? Maybe. 57% of the snaps, 20 carries, 73 yards, and a rushing touchdown, and six targets. Uh, maybe we're back. I would say we are I would say we are back. Um his utilization looked like pre injury utilization. Um and uh he, he didn't appear slow or or limited in any way so i'm gonna say we're back but we're definitely back with this next player yes jonathan taylor it finally happened 18 for 47 that's not that great but then we had five for 20 through 22 and a score through the air 60 percent of the snap uh, snaps <laughs> snaps moss 23 percent just that? seven opportunities for zach moss has the invincibility superstar ran off yeah it, it was actually uh jonathan taylor was actually up to 74 oh i'm sorry of the snaps sorry. yeah so um i uh, whatever they're saying whatever you know wink wink nod nod what what happened last week it i refuse to believe them because they were giving him basically 70 plus percent of snaps last week and he was dominating something happened are you saying about the in uh, that second half the the like the hit in the legs gets up starts doing as he said toe lifts right just right. just right in the middle of the football game like you know my my calves I gotta get a pump I gotta I get, get a workout I, in. I, I, my calves are looking a little small in the pants right now right. I gotta I gotta pump them up well just like he's done his whole career and you then, know while I'm, playing football games he always play. he always does that wait no he's <laughs> never ever ever done that um and so yeah so I I think something happened at the end of the previous game that made them just limit his utilization the rest of that game, and that's why we saw Moss. Moss was 23% of snaps, and at this point going forward, it should be the Jonathan Taylor show. Joe Mixon had himself a nice fantasy day. He's We're, we're back at that he is a workhorse for a high-powered offense. Granted, his touchdown, well, they, were the, the, they were doing everything they could to get Joe Burrow a passing touchdown, <laughs> and unfortunately, Jamar Chase dropped an easy one. If you have Jamar, fortunate for you if you have Joe Mixon. 
Uh, and of course, uh, Derrick Henry, Najee Harris. We already talked about those and guys. T. Higgins had. Oh, T. Yeah, he he should have had a touchdown and just right. stepped out of bounds. Yeah, a we'll, little bit. We'll talk about him in just a moment. But Tank Dell, Noah Brown, Nico Collins. Man, I've Nico had that early touchdown, and I was I felt like I I did it. I nailed it. Got the Nico star of the week. I am a wizard. And I had the wrong Houston Texan. <laughs> yes, you I mean, had, it worked out. You had the third best <laughs> Houston Texan, who, keep in mind, is a wide receiver one right now on the week. Right, three wide receivers uh, as wide receiver ones. Um, man, they C.J. Stroud was just on fire. He was incredible. Tank Dell, eleven targets, six for one fourteen. Noah Brown, and a shout out to the Borgogan. And Matthew Betts working the DFS pass. Noah Brown was listed this week as a dart throw. Hope you threw that dart into some tourneys. Kyle even told me uh, when when I was talking to the uh, you know our lineups and stuff. Mm -hmm. He mentioned he was like, "Hey, Noah Brown's a good, good, good start this week." I was like, eh. <laughs> "He said, shut up, Kyle. Shut up, Kyle. I'll let me do what I want. I know your place. Shut your mouth." Uh, he was uh, no, he but. But he did know what he was talking about. <laughs> C.D. Lamb. Holy crap, man. 16 targets, 11 for 191. We didn't get a touchdown, unfortunately. Yeah, but he looks unstoppable but, right now. But now we are the last three games. I mean, it very much coincides with Dak's ascension. But three weeks ago, it was 7 for 117, 12 for 158, 11 for 191. Are we getting... 200 yards next week, Jason. <laughs> it's It's been ascending. Um, I do not think so because I don't think you're going to need to throw the ball a ton against the New York Giants. Well, that's lame. Yeah, you just hope for an early touchdown. But do you remember when earlier we were talking about how nice Dak's upcoming schedule was? Yeah. Same schedule. Oh, for, for CD? For CD. He has the same one. That's good. I thought they might have conflicting schedules. Yeah, so that's real helpful. <laughs> Amari Cooper. Deshaun Watson was back-ish. Uh, and it turned into a great day for Amari Cooper, five for thirty, one thirty nine, and, and, and a touchdown. one touchdown, <laughs> one, one touchdown that we were trying to figure out. How, we'd need to. This should not be allowed. It should not be allowed. <laughs> the the refs should have thrown a flag on that play and said no, illegal, stupid. <laughs> that we need to replay that down. It should not count. If you have not seen this touchdown, it shouldn't count. <laughs> it's not fair, Deshaun Watson throws a terrible ball into the helmet of his own player just just awful pass it are you are we sure this wasn't an intentional trick shot like uh, the yeah, old uh, like the, super like off. the michael jordan mcdonald's commercials yeah over the yeah. yeah off the helmet yeah uh 20 feet in the air nothing but cooper yeah um so he 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 threw the ball at his own player's helmet it ricocheted off, flew to the end zone, and landed in Amari Cooper's and, hands. And it counts. Stephon Diggs, 6 for 86 and 1, got the late touchdown last night. Chilling at the wide receiver 3 on the season. That Deontay. Was awful. What's that? That touchdown was awful. What? Survi for us, Mike. Oh. For our champ, yeah. champ, champ team. And we lost yeah. to Kyle, which we were beating him the whole time. The only thing that could not happen for us to lose is a Diggs touchdown because he had the stack. I will tell you after tonight if it's terrible because the most important league is still league of record currently, and I needed that touchdown real bad, okay. real, real, All real right, bad. Trader. Uh, if if Herbert goes off tonight and I lose that one and in Dino Junior, then I will join you and say it was real stupid. Okay, Deontay Johnson, incredible game. AJ Brown. It's just nonstop now, seven for 66 and a touchdown. Devontae Smith. Oh, the streak is over. Which streak? No more 125-yard games for AJ. Oh, Brown. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he's still dominant. What a loser. They're, they're heading into the bye week. Devontae Smith, if I could get him on my roster right now, I would really be trying to do that. Yeah, and, and on a bye week, a lot of times you can, yep. you can get someone for cheaper. T. Higgins, Andy start of the week. He was back eight for 110. Should have had a touchdown, but he did not. But T. Higgins is back. He gets Houston, Baltimore, Pittsburgh. Jahan Dotson. Where are, is Jahan Dotson back? Hmm. This is a redemption I, tour I think, for a lot of players. Yeah, right now. no, I, I, I think so. Is it possible? Yeah, because as long as um the last uh, three games, you know, as long as Samuel is out, 
the well, it, it happened before Samuel was out. The last three games, eight targets, ten targets, eight targets. That's that's incredible utilization. So whatever happened, you know, he had one target the week prior to that. <clears throat> they are involving him more, and I don't think we ever thought Jahan Dotson isn't a good football player. Correct. So it's just a matter of why aren't you using him? Now they're using him. Their defense is willfully worse. They traded away some of their defensive line. Um they are now actively playing for the future. So I think that, yeah, they're they're going to try to make sure that the, the young guys on this team are built up for success for the future. I'm, I'm absolutely back. The last three games right now, he's on pace for 1,200 yards, 147 targets, like, you know, basically what we hoped coming into the season. NBA Jam Rules has him heating up, and he gets to take on the Seahawks next week. So he might be on fire by the end of that. Chris Olave. We did it. Hey. We did it. Hey, eight targets. I mean, six for 46 and one, probably the a touchdown. He got the touchdown. I'm sure he had a crap ton of air yards that he didn't convert because this is what happens. But we got the touchdown. Gets Minnesota next week, then a bye week, then Atlanta. Let's get rolling. Derek Carr, Chris Olave, let's get rolling. At the tight end position, the doctor. Oh, man. Uh, Perhaps last week against Carolina was simply a blip. Because we had 11 targets, 10 for 130, and a touchdown. That will not be prescriptive, that level of usage. But, I mean, I mean it, it, you it, now have... It kind of is. Well, I'm, I'm saying the 11 targets, because they were in a shootout. Right. But, uh, but him being a featured target... I mean, week five, he had 10 targets. Seven targets week six. Then they had their bye week. He is a an integral part of this offense, and it was nice to see. Obviously, the shootout thing is true. But it was nice to see with Tank Dell back that he can still coexist. I mean, obviously, yep. that 130 yards on a touchdown for a tight end is is incredible. Even the down week against Carolina, it was at 21% of the targets. So over the past month of games for them, he has seen 28% of C.J. Stroud's targets. You know, I, I mean, I was a big doubter that it would keep going, but – at this point, yeah. you have to be bought in. You've got to be bought in. Let me ask you, because I think that these two players are similar archetypes. One is a replacement of the other. But Dalton Schultz uh, versus Jake Ferguson, his replacement in Dallas, right. who has looked like him and Dak are starting to connect more and more. He's becoming a really important target. I mean, he had 10 targets uh, last night, 7 for 91 and a touchdown, a great game. For him, um, he's super involved around the red zone. Which player would you rather have going forward? I'd rather have Ferguson. Okay, I think I would as well. It's still there. the 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 Cowboys' schedule. They're I think they're going to keep putting up points through the air. Cole Komet, Cole Komo, dude, he was the, awesome. The secret agent man loves Cole Komet, but I mean, there was one one of his touchdowns. Just that, head topped. I mean, he just outmanned that other yes, guy on on a pass that shouldn't have been thrown, and said, "I'll take this touchdown." <laughs> and I really enjoy his little baseball celebration, his little home you, run. You like that one? I like it. Who, I like that he's someone got a else thing. used to, Kyle. You probably remember someone else used to do that. Not, and I'm sure plenty of people. There was a uh, Kyle. Look into this. Someone else had the touchdown celebration of the. The home run swing. That was a prominent uh, fantasy player. Kate Otten, six for 70 and two. Oh, J.J. Watt used to do it. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Kate Otten had himself a great game. Will it continue? I, I don't know. Jake Ferguson. We got Fergalicious, baby. Seven for 91 with a touchdown. Ten targets. The connection between him and Dak is it's starting to lock in. Yeah, I mean, he's the number two weapon in this offense, and that's clear now. Right, you know, it's, it's yes. not Gallup. Yep. It's not Brandon Cooks. It's Jake Ferguson. It's just like what we saw from Dalton Schultz, Schultz last year. So if they're going to have to pass, then I think Jake Ferguson should have good game. The Schoon man almost had a touchdown. Jay, I don't know if you oh, saw yeah. that oh, play. Yeah. I mean, they they were inches away from lots more points. Yes. Were the Cowboys? Uh, Alfred Alfred Morris. Thank you, thank you, Owl. That is exactly who I was trying to remember. It was Alfred Morris running back for the Manders. That was his go-to. You know, freaking. 
waiver wire superstar. Oh, yeah. That was a great time. Jonu Smith, five for 100 <laughs> and a touchdown. Uh, and he also had a carry because Arthur Smith got to the goal line and oh, says, you yeah. know what I need to do? A jet a sweep, jet sweep with, with Jonu. Yeah. It's the perf it's the perfect play design to to sit down in the in the week while you're get pre prepping for the week and go how can I anger these fantasy football managers? I got it. There is a rushing touchdown so you can't get points for Taylor Heineke, a rushing touchdown to Johnu Smith, the player who angers people the most. I cannot be convinced otherwise. That play was fully intentional. Oh yeah. Fully, fully intentional. Fully intentional that this is he knows that when he's designing this play up, that that fantasy people are gonna get big mad. I one hundred percent agree with that. It didn't work. You lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We're we're really angry at him today. Uh Taysom Hill. Uh look, man, that Andy start of the week. He he had himself a very fine week, but Taysom Hill four four for thirteen and a touchdown. That was in the receiving game. Eleven for fifty-two. Um, wait, didn't he? I thought he, and, and I he thought threw, he threw yeah. a touchdown. No, I he, thought he, he threw got, one to Juwan. Th this is the he got points from every possible way. He was a tight end as a receiver. He was a quarterback in this game, and he was a running back in this game. Uh, I saw someone submit uh, for for Monday Monday. Uh, I'll take some points from here. I'll take some <laughs> points from there. I'll take some points that's, from everywhere. That's a good one. Yeah. Very well done. Uh, yeah, and then Juwan Johnson sneaks in because he got a touchdown. Just good to see him back on the field. Mark Andrews, it was ho-hum, but it's 9 for 80. I mean, he's still Mark Andrews. Dalton Kincaid, Jason started the week 10 for 81. He, I mean, he looks... Cincinnati... He looks like yeah. he's going to be in a very good spot moving forward. He does. Cincinnati is one of those matchups, though, that you desperately want to target. Um, they are schedule-adjusted the worst against tight ends. <clears throat> uh, two of the other worst most... The, the teams you want to target are the Denver Broncos and, surprisingly, the New York Jets. Those are great targets for tight ends. Um, will you kindly read me uh, Dalton Kincaid's upcoming schedule? <laughs> Dalton Kincaid plays the Denver Broncos, uh -huh. the New York Jets. Oh, fantastic. And keep, the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, I mean, keep rolling him out yeah. there right now. And those games are guaranteed to have him on the field because Dawson Knox can't come back from IR yet. So Kincaid is, is an awesome play going so forward. So I'm realizing we made it through the wide receiver part of this duds. Now, are we saying that Gabe Davis just does not have big boy pants anymore? I I, I feel like personally we're oh still wait we're not, we're not wait I, we're not I don't to know the what you're thinking, we're not to the sorry I had just I was thinking about how good uh, Dalton Kincaid had done and then I was thinking of how bad yes so Davis. no we we will dunk on him in <laughs> okay. just a moment everybody uh, <laughs> Luke Musgrave freaking Jason yeah Jason baby. played Luke Musgrave in our fantasy face off and. I may have had some words for him in the morning, making fun of him, <laughs> and, and then, I looked really good for the majority of the game, and then Luke scores his first touchdown ever. Yeah, three for 51 <laughs> and a touchdown. Uh, oh, again, man. tight ends are one of those, you target certain matchups, the Rams are one of those. Um, Hunter Henry had a touchdown, David Njoku had a touchdown. Yeah, Alvin, Alvin the chipmunk. Started Luke Musgrave against me, and it was that's right very I, successful. I, I won this week. Yeah, you I did. Dominated you by like half zero a, point. Yeah, something. But I got second, so I'm not in trouble. That's Hunter true. Henry, David, and Joku uh, also scored touchdowns this week, moving them into the studs. Thanks again to our sponsor, NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket, it's never been easier to keep up with all your fantasy players. Watch the rest of the NFL season for half the price at. $174 win bundled with YouTube TV. Sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. Terms and embargoes apply. No refunds. All right, let's get into the Gabe Davis section of the show. Pooped in his big boy pants. We're back here with Lamar Jackson, who had a very good game. Oh, yeah. Dominated the Seahawks, ran like a gazelle, had some great uh, rushing attempts, 60 rushing yards. That usually gives you a good enough baseline to have a great game, especially when you put up 37 
points against Seattle, but it was all rushing. It was all rushing yeah. touchdowns for uh, Gus had two. The rookie had one. Uh, so it was just – and we've seen this a couple times now. Obviously, when uh, Gus had three rushing touchdowns last week, that's two really, really bad weeks in a row from Lamar that for fantasy where he played excellent. Yes. And it's frustrating. What do you do? It is. Uh, you just keep playing Lamar. It's very similar. Let me ask you about this guy. So Tua, rough game. Against Kansas City. Kansas City is a great defense. They are a great team. Only 193 passing yards, one passing touchdown. Tua, we were taught we were just talking about quarterbacks, and to me, Tua was in that list of these are the guys I don't care about the matchup. Mm -hmm. I'm locking them in because the ceiling for Tua is the number one overall quarterback. Yeah. But we've now seen when when the Dolphins are playing good teams. Good teams are figuring out how to shut down the passing attack. Are you still in with Tua being – he's on a, on a bye week, so there's nothing for that, but then it's the Raiders, but then it's on the road against the Jets. Are you still leaving Tua in that must-start category? Yeah, I, I'm definitely leaving okay. Tua in the must-start category. He's he's going to be in my lineup if he's on my team uh, because you're not going to have him with someone better than him. I'm not gonna. He's not in the category where I'm playing someone off of waivers in a good matchup. Well, but I'm saying like, what if you had Dak? Oh well, Dak. Yeah, I mean, Dak is in that situation right now for me too. And a, a locked-in starter. Yeah, if you had both of those guys, then I would I would be playing matchups in a situation like that. I think that's probably okay. rare, but Dak could have been on waivers, so yeah. that, that's a fair that's a fair counterpoint. Geno Smith. I mean the the Seahawks were dominated. The Seahawks. I mean, this was a battle of two first place teams in their division and the AFC said boy get out of here NFC <laughs> you suck I mean Gino's been it, it did the clock strike midnight for Gino Smith is he a pumpkin yeah I'm, I'm asking you um I'm planning on starting him this next week I've got Jalen Hurts on by the matchup against Washington looks all right yeah we'll give wonderful. we'll go one more we'll go one, one more go here with Gino Smith but yeah. it has been very frustrating for all Seahawks for fantasy football. Yeah, I mean, since week three, he hasn't scored 15 fantasy points as a quarterback. That's yeah. that's awful. Yeah, you got to play him against Washington. Alvin Kamara, what? How did how does Alvin like, – the way that he's being utilized, how does he possibly end up in this list? But against Chicago, yeah. nine yeah. for 26, four for 44 through the air. The other running backs – and I mean, and Taysom Hill is not officially running back, but they got worked in. I, I think Kendry Miller got banged up. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what happened. So maybe we'll report on that later. Hey, look, it's two Seahawks. Kenneth Walker the third pun was submitted. Hey, can you guess what it was, Jason? Uh, I saw a lot of them. Well, uh, I'm saying Kenneth, if you say the full name Kenneth Walker the third had a bad game, you would say Kenneth Walker. The, the turd. Yep. Yeah, okay. Right. Just, just making sure we're 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 simpatico here. And Zach Charbonnet, who outsnapped Walker yet again, but neither of these players really got any sort of workload. The Seahawks got their butts whooped, so hopefully that was just a product of them getting their butts whooped. Yeah, s some of the worries about what Kenneth Walker could lose with Charbonnet in the beginning of the season appear to be happening now. And it's interesting because if you watched Pete Carroll's press conference uh, after last week, and he was he was gushing over Charbonnet, what he talked about was he didn't realize how much they missed Charbonnet until he missed that game in week seven. And so it was like he likes what he brings to the table, and now all of a sudden you've got him with more snaps two weeks in a row. And while I don't think you could play Charbonnet on his own yet, it does hurt Kenneth Walker. He's losing touches. Yeah. Bijan Robinson, 11 for 51, 2 for 8 through the air, had the fumble. Uh, Arthur Smith seeing Bijan fumble was probably the happiest moment of his season because then he got to bench him. Tony Pollard. Oh, man. Tony Pollard, 12 for 51, 5 targets, but only 3 for 12. He did have a goal line touchdown that was called back speculation on whether or not the penalty was the, the correct call or not but it still took it away and Tony Pollard has now gone 
Uh, a tweet from Ian Harditz, an NFL high 136 consecutive touches without a touchdown. Yeah, and and ridiculous. Um, I mean, it, it's just it's his floor is not what you think it should be. Correct. As the you know he's when you tell me he's playing 77 percent of the snaps, he's getting uh, the opportunities for a good offense. His floor has to be higher than what it's been. But if you if you actually look. Seven fantasy points, six fantasy points, 14 before the bye, 6.4 fantasy points, 7.5 fantasy points. This is five weeks, five weeks in a row where he hasn't hit eight fantasy points outside of one game. I mean, I I don't know what you do. I, you know, I, I know you guys have stayed bullish on him. I've been worried about him. Um, the matchups coming up appear much, much, much better. So maybe you see him as a trade low candidate at this point because I don't think it's getting any worse. And the Giants and Carolina and Washington, the next three matchups coming up, are all teams you should be able to run on. You should have a big lead in. So, you know, but it's, it is worrisome. And it's been like if you've got Pollard, you've been losing games because yep. of Pollard. I have, a, I have a league where I have Lamar, Bijan, and Tony Pollard. I didn't win this week, but so let, let me flip that conversation back then because, yes, J uh, Andy and I have stayed, remained bullish on Tony Pollard, believing it's going to get better. I believe that you have remained the most bullish on Bijan that it's going to get better. Yeah. Already, I mean, the, uh, another game of disappointing output for Bijan Robinson, where are you in terms of that? Like, or do you still believe of, of the – the ceiling, or do you just think that he's a safe-ish player? What? How do you view him rest of season? I view him as he's been so far this season, which is he doesn't have a rock star ceiling, a top five running back ceiling. But you know, if if you look, you know, at his just fantasy points, he's got a game of seventeen, of nineteen, of sixteen. Um, his disappointing games recently: ten point eight, ten point five, twelve point two. That's still fine. It's not what you hoped when you were drafting him in the first round, um, but but I do think that his his floor is 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 higher. This was his worst game of the season, um, but he Aside also from headache gate. Right, right. I mean, I've, yes, a couple weeks ago when he unexpectedly was ill and it wasn't reported and he didn't play in the game. Um, that was his worst game of the season, but that's, you know, you, you can't blame him for that. Um, this was his actual worst game while he played. He lost a fumble, and I think that that played a big part. Obviously, you lose fantasy points and you lose the opportunity to score on that drive, yada, yada. Yeah. It, th Pollard and Bijan, I think, are going to be very interesting of the, like, Bijan is a great player. I think Tony Pollard's a great player, too, but Bijan is electric has a coach who won't give him opportunities. So you have like a regression type of a thing where there's a world where he gets more work. And Tony Pollard, like he's already getting the work. And then there's the regression world where just the touchdowns start coming back to him because Dallas is putting up a whole bunch of points. They're just they happen to be coming through the passing game. So watching those two in particular I think is going to be fascinating. DeAndre Swift had a down game 18 for 43. It was against Dallas. I've, I'm just going to move on from that. Zach Moss, we discussed it a little bit, but are you are you starting Zach Moss no. next week? No, no, no okay. way. No way. He, he got 21% of the snaps. He is now the backup to a superstar. Um, I, I think you've got you've to view him as an insurance back at this point. We were waiting for this to happen. Yes. And we thought it was going to happen last week. That was like the trajectory – and then the second half weirdness of what happened last week um, made us believe, oh, maybe it's just going to be 50% the rest you of the week. You just had a little recalculating. We took an early turn, and the GPS is like, no, you, yeah. weren't, you weren't supposed to do that. You turn, go back. So, um, so I, I think he's obviously a wonderfully valuable insurance running back. If if something happens to Jonathan Taylor, we already know he's going to be awesome. But he is, he is uh, 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 he's not in a timeshare. Isaiah Pacheco, 16 for 66. Uh, I traded for Pacheco, so, of course, the first game I get from him is the 
First game he hasn't caught a pass all year. Fantastic. Pretty game. sweet. Enjoy his bye week. Uh, yep, I will. James Cook. Uh, 55% of the snaps. I'm not going to hit the button because Latavius said 45. And the dump truck is on his way. <sighs> Top 24 and only four of nine games for James Cook. He's just not getting enough work. He's not getting valuable touches. The running back room... The running back totals for the Buffalo Bills has stayed the same this year as it has been during the Josh Allen tenure, which is not very valuable. And so if you're splitting up, the, the, you want the passing game here. I think that they as a team want to change. They just can't. They just don't know how. It's it's not, it's not in right. Josh Allen's blood. Uh, both the Rams running backs had a, a down game. Daryl Henderson was 10 for 19. Yeah, Brett ripping farts, man. <laughs> But I mean, if Matthew Stafford is so, are you is is Henderson a, a, a almost a full bench? He is a must must bench until Matthew Stafford is back. Okay. Like I, I'm, I am benching everybody. I'll bench Cooper Cup for Ooh, for man for a middling That's asset. Tough. Brett Rippin farts was so <sighs> unbelievably bad. There was just nothing you couldn't. It, it would be like if I played quarterback. You can't play Cooper Cup. If I'm out there playing quarterback. I would bench Cooper Cup if you were the starting quarterback for the Rams. Just letting you know. Exactly. I would do yeah. that. And I'd be ripping farts too. <laughs> uh, speaking of farts, Devin Singletary. Come on, man. How, how do the Texans put up that performance? And Devin Singletary is on the field for 75% of the snaps. And the guy does absolutely nothing. Yeah. Uh, that one felt really bad. 75% of the snaps. 93% of the running back rush attempts, 50% of the running back targets. It is exactly the type of game you dream of that he's all alone and he's going to get all the opportunity. He just wasn't very good. Jamar Chase, 4 for 41. He still had eight targets and a dropped, egregiously dropped touchdown. Jason, oh no. Jason, how's my four? You sound old, Adam. I played the Colts and I couldn't do anything. Why not? Because I'm old. Oh, so is this the second half? I'm so old. <laughs> is this the second I'm, half of the season? I'm tired, Jason. Oh, you're Just so tired. let me sleep. You're so tired, buddy. Oh. What, how are you going to do against it's Chicago? It's the end. <laughs> I see it. Um, that's two down, down-ish games for Adam Thielen. I, I don't consider was, this last was, week a down, down. I mean, down for the yes, fire he was yes, on, but he yes. had he had eight receptions for seventy two yards last week. Uh, I'm, it, I'm not. What, where's your concern level? I, so because I don't view the previous week as a, as an off week. Okay, this is one bad week, and one bad week does not change uh, my opinion on him. I'm I'm fully continuing to be in on Adam Thielen um, until it is a trend. Okay. It should be great against Chicago next week. I mean, it should have been great against the Colts, but it didn't happen. We'll see if we have a bounce back oh, week. Also, um, yes. Oh, uh, Adam. Uh, yeah, yes. Your quarterback sucks. He, I'm sorry. You're you're you guys made a flat out mistake. Oh, well, don't say that. You you traded up and you had the chance to take C.J. Stroud. Don't say that. I mean, this week was the most brutal it, example possible. I did have that thought. Like, I, I, I don't want to dunk on Panthers fans, Two but it's just like that. With, if with that game, and I, I think Bryce Young will be a good quarterback. I absolutely do not. Okay, I, I think that he can still be a good quarterback, but at this point in the season, it definitely feels really bad. He has real I, bad. It, he has been so bad; it's blown my mind because I feel like he wasn't. A horrible college, you know. There's, there's a reason he was taken number one, but he's been like bad reads. Like, what are you doing? What are you thinking? He's been bad throws. I thought you were supposed to be like super accurate, like just missing a guy. There was a there was a play this last game where, I mean, he just the, the commentator the commentator was like, he goes, "Whoa!" He was shocked <laughs> at how bad it was. He overthrew this drops easy, back to pass. Whoa! It, it, it was like an easy, you know, pass. <laughs> It, to the flat, and he overthrew the guy by like, like high. You, n no one, no one. Wimbyama couldn't have jumped up and caught that ball. <laughs> Sweet basketball reference. Yeah. 
I mean, that's why me and Kyle, superstar quarterback scouts, had C.J. Stroud number one. Oh, I did too. Okay, well then you're in the superstar <laughs> Thank scouts. Thank you. Uh, speaking of deleted players, Devontae Adams. Howard, like, I I was worried about Aiden O'Connell. Or where's your worry meter now? Uh, Aiden O'Connell looked good to me, good enough to support Devontae Adams. You brought up the fact that you can't really support two guys. Yeah very easily as as a rookie and he just he wasn't even throwing him the ball at the beginning of the game yeah it was all Jacoby Myers um and then again this was a 30 to 6 blowout so this wasn't a game where but you, you still know, had to get to the 30 to 6 and I mean he had seven targets four for 34 I, I'm I'm not you're still fine I'm not really okay. worried about Devontae Adams I mean this this stinks and this is now a, a stretch run of you know very similar to Tony Pollard where I I don't think Tony Pollard is bad that's not what I'm saying. It's just been a bad, bad ride. Right. I don't think Devontae Adams is bad. It's just been a bad, bad ride going forward. He's got the Jets next week. So it's like I don't I don't trust I don't trust Aiden O'Connell against the Jets. Um That'll well, be a very interesting then he's start got, set decision. Then he's got Miami, who now has Jalen Ramsey. Right. Then he's got the Chiefs. Okay, so I'm that's, actually super worried. And then he's is, got a bye week. I'm super worried. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I I don't like. Oh. Hey, that's why we talk through these things. Yeah. Uh, the Rams wide receivers gross. The Dolphins wide receivers, including Tyreek Hill, gross. It was still ten targets, but eight for sixty-two. He got shut down. Seahawks wide receivers, Jalen Waddle, gross. Oh, okay. We, back. We, to, oh, we talked about it last week about no one gets injured and leaves the game and comes back more than Jalen Waddle, but. He set his own record for the amount of times that he had to leave with injury, and he's back. Yeah, it was like it was like ten times. Yeah, Lashawn McCoy is is looking on, just so proud of what Jalen Waddle is accomplishing right now. Uh, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, both stunk. I think JSN led the wide receiver room. I mean, it's, leading the wide receiver room I, for a game like that is. I, but I'm just saying, like, this is. It, the, it, the Ravens in Baltimore is a tough place to play, and they just took their lunch money. They just they just yeah. wiped the floor with them. Zay Flowers, one target, one catch for 11 yards. Again, I mean, you have Gus Edwards and Keaton Mitchell running all over the Seahawks, but Zay Flowers is – he has entered he, – he's not a must-start oh, type no. of a player, and we started hot, and now we're cooling off, and it's disappointing. I, Here we're – oh, yeah, oh, you got I mean, Zay Flowers? Since week two, which is, you know, almost the entire season, he's scored 10 fantasy points once. Yeah. it's That's someone that you really can't start. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think he's like a not a must start. I think it's like... You can't even... Don't, yep. don't start. Yeah, we, we could be there. Speaking of... Oh. <laughs> the, 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 the trap that was laid by Gabe Davis. I mean, oh, he man. is the trap, yeah. man. He is the trap. This was whatever was, it, was was Andy talking about that with Gabe Davis like laying the the yeah I I think the that foliage was, over the yes. over the this was home oh, this man. was the trap after last week whatever your imagination of like that's the, that's the thing you want the most in life that's what Gabe Davis miraged us all into twelve targets last week <laughs> twelve targets <laughs> and now in a game where you're behind and playing catch up it was. The game script was perfect. Yeah. The matchup, perfect. Yeah. The opportunity, right there. Two targets. Josh Allen threw the ball so much. Gabe Davis just disappeared. What happened? He gave everyone a big fat zero is what happened. We we started Gabe Davis yeah. over Kareem Hunt. Yeah. If we ju And we talked about it beforehand. We're like, yep. ah, which yep. way? And if we go the other way, we win. Yeah. But we lost. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Chris Godwin, two for 16. I mean, I'm super mad at Gabe Davis. <laughs> like, I am super <laughs> mad at him right now. I'm just sick of it because I've got him everywhere. And I was really loving the ride. I mean, he was consistent. He yeah. had a touchdown in like four straight games. I'm super mad at you, Gabe. Get, well, get targets. Can't wait to uh, them. discuss with you if you should start him next week against the Broncos. Yeah, I will. I will start him <laughs> next week. You want to know why? Because you probably shouldn't, which means you do.
Ooh, yeah. but what if he knows that you shouldn't? Oh. Just it, it, I, I, I just so mad at you, DJ Moore. It was against the Saints with with Secret Agent Man three for forty four. It's just this is what's going to happen, and then of course the incredible three for fourteen for Travis Kelsey. I mean, the Gabe Davis thing is pretty mind blowing off of the week that he had, but Travis Kelsey going three for fourteen makes. No sense. Yeah, it was no sense. It was weird. And How were, does this happen? I, I I don't know. I mean, you know, I want to say everyone has down games, but Kelsey really doesn't. But this is kind of two three weeks. for fourteen. How does this happen? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 very unfortunate. Now he goes on a bye week. Um, so far, I want to see the gap between Kelsey and Mark Andrews. So it looks like Kelsey is at 111 fantasy points on the season. Mark Andrews is at 104. So they are uh, right next to each other. So you have to go back to 2021, week 18, against the Denver Broncos to find a target share as putrid as he got this week. Like, that's how far back you have to go. How many games? <laughs> Crazy. But... Hopefully you were able to pull out a win without Travis Kelsey doing normal stuff. That is going to do it for today's episode. Tomorrow we will be talking about the waivers. Do you need anything from today's or tonight's game? Jay, are you done? Um, I'm I'm done. Uh, well, no, that uh, I need ten points combined from Eckler and Brees Hall. Okay, all right. I needed ten points combined from Eckler, Brees Hall, and Gabe Davis. <laughs> And you still need and I still need <laughs> ten points combined from Brees Hall and Austin Eck. Well, I need Justin Herbert to just be okay tonight and not be great. Okay. Or I'll be sad. That's gonna do it. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.